introducing the release curve method, RCM, for identifying and preventing the 90% syndrome. Do you know that more than 50% of the projects are not completed on time? And not because of new scope, changes, contract stuff and so forth, but because they fail to achieve their original scope properly even if they reach the 95% or so. The RCM uses deliverables release stage, DRS, rather than activities progress estimates, making possible to plot boundaries where the progress curve, project S curve, is to be found. Take note of this simple example, imagine two towers under construction of 10 floors each, both towers got 90% progress. Then, how much is missing completion? Well, many people may say that there is only 10% completion remaining. But take a look in the first tower, this has the first five floors addressing 100% and the five remaining 80%, so, as a whole it reaches 90% of progress. Now, see the other tower, there you will find all the floors reaching 90% of progress, making also 90% of progress as a whole. Now, get back to the first tower. How many floors have you already completed? Only 5, how many floors are not completed? These are the others 5, which then equals to 50% completion remaining. Then, the second tower, there you have no floor already completed it means 100% left. Thus said, getting 90% of project progress does not mean 10% missing completion. The reason is that progress estimate is not equal to completion estimate. There is not an equality, but an equation, and this is it. Percentage of project progress, P3, equals to percentage of work in progress, WIP, plus percentage of work completed, Q3. All the traditional methods base on the left side of the equation. But the RCM bases on the right side, specifically the completion estimate. Then, the completion equation also called the release equation can be expressed as Q3 equals to P3 minus VIP. Completion estimates is primarily based on requirements achievement instead of quantities, and focus on deliverables, rather than on activities. There are three variations of the method, those are, the standard method, the simplified method, and the last planner-like method. The first one works with deliverables and points of requirements verification, and is very precise. The simplified method run the release equation using activities as inputs, and it is very easy to implement. The last planner-like method can be run with the well-known train of activities, and also is able to unveil the 90% syndrome. In addition, the BIM approach method is in research and development phase. Now let's see an application running the release curve simplified method for a building project. This is the main dashboard. Here you find the disciplines. Let's click on the general status. This is the upper limit showing all activities in progress and assuming that these are 100% done. This is the maximum percentage that the ordinary progress curve can achieve in a given period of time. This is the lower limit representing only the activities or quantities recorded as 100% done. As it can be seen and expected the two limits trend determine the ordinary S-curve trend and its related curves. Let's click on architecture discipline and see what is shown. Here we also found the concerning limits as its projection. Thus said, even if the ordinary S-curve is close to 90%, the limits show an incoming extension. This kind of outstanding prediction is effective far before the S-curve reaches the 90%, then, much more proactive actions over potential extension can be taken. In this sense, when traditional methods show a well and track progress estimates, the deliverable curve unveils the real completion stage, and identify and makes able to prevent the 90% syndrome. Get ahead of the curve and try the deliverable release curve method. Quality Consulting Solutions We built solutions.